this is the crankcase drain plug in here and you can buy them on eBay with a bolt uh, I think they're stainless steel and then they got a bolt tapped into the end here so that you don't have to undo this great big plug every time if your bike sumps you can just undo a little bolt in the center so I'm going to drill tap mine and uh, put a I don't know what size maybe an 8 mil little uh, bolt in there so I can undo it and uh, drain oil if it ever sumps or it sits all winter I can just undo that little bolt it's hard to get a big wrench on this thing so that's what I'm going to do Tramped up find the center I'm going to chuck my tap up and just uh, spin it by hand to get her going. I forgot to turn the camera on. Just spun that on by hand. Got a 5 sixteenths bolt. It's not very thick walled, getting only a few threads on there, but try that. If I have to weld more onto it, I will, but every time I shut that light switch off, it shuts the lathe off too. I disengage it here, so three places it's disengaged. So that's that there. Put a copper washer on it. I'll probably put some a little bit of thread goop on it and uh, take this apart again and blow it out. But now if it ever sumps, I just have to undo this little bolt here and drain it out. They sell them on eBay. I think they're like 65 bucks stainless steel. <laughs> they're a ridiculous price. Maybe they're less. Maybe it's 45 US, 65 Canadian, something like that. So uh, I'll try that. I'm just putting a couple of coats of paint on that cylinder out there. Let's go outside, right? Come on, let's go outside. One more coat. Little dog here has been pretty quiet. 
Got a little bark collar on you, don't we? Little, he doesn't like it at all. Don't like that bark collar, do you? No. No. It's, it's hot today. It's, it's like 74, 75 degrees. It's nice. Warmest day of the year so far. Well, I got this from Peter Work. That's the only chunk of scrap aluminum he could find. And uh, I got to make this into one of those spacers in there. Into a spacer like that. I got to make two of them out of this. Don't know if I can make two, but I can make one. I need to make one in here for the sprocket. And I think I'm going to start with that one because that has to be, this has to be lined up perfectly with that sprocket up there. And I can measure from here to the center of the sprocket on this bike to get that, to get that one uh, figured out exactly. And then what's ever left over will be the spacer for this side here, so. Yeah, I think I forgot what I figured this was, like half inch or something like that, I think. I think this was bigger. I can't remember. So yeah, I gotta turn that down on the lathe. It's nice it's got the center part here, I can chuck it up in that. I got this all cleaned out, scrubbed out really good. Still gonna pull the oil pump off and just check the gears. I'm sure they're all pretty good in there, but I may as well check them while I'm here. And uh, I got it all cleaned up really nice there. I got the uh, the cylinders painted with uh, two or three coats of paint on there. So that's ready to go on. Got to put the pistons in, but I think before I do it, I'm going to uh, I'm going to make up uh, an oil concoction out of uh, some 2050 oil, some assembly lube, a little bit of this stuff. Millitech, because that, that, it's the slipperiest oil around that stuff. And I'm going to pressurize it into the uh, crank and into the journals and prime that part of the system. I'll also put some of it in this pump when I uh, take it apart as well too. So that's all ready to go. I can bolt that back on, put the cylinders and pistons on, and then the head's here all ready to go. Everything's plain Jane, nothing's, this is just sitting on there loose, that's why the gasket's like that. But uh, everything's plain Jane, I haven't painted anything, I, I might paint these cases just because they're, maybe not, I, I just might leave this one rough looking. I, I, I'll leave it clean, it's it's nice and clean, it's spotless. But uh, I think I'm just going to leave this engine raw. i got to clean this cover because I had a couple of big gouges in here that I, I've sanded out. So I will buff this one up really nice. At least one cover will be on there pretty nice. Okay, let's go to my lathe. See how that thing spins up. Just to see if it's fairly true to start with. Looks pretty good. Okay, I gotta first calculate how much, how much, uh, I gotta get it on the 4.4 inches, I'm pretty sure. But I wanna see, um, oh, I'll turn the whole thing down to 4.4. I think that'll be the start, is turn this down to 4.4 inches. And then, uh, 
Could do, just could do the uh, the inner hole. I'll we'll figure it out. Back on the Norton now. I got the wheel bearing in so I can finish making the spacers there. But I'm just, uh, I cut the original brank bracket here and it's got the contour already on it. So just sanding that down, getting ready to weld it on there like that. So uh, I'm gonna have to sand the tank here. More and more I'm thinking about this tank. The tank's, I mean, beautiful. Beautiful condition, everything. And I kind of wanted that rustic look. <laughs> I'm kind of tossed about sanding these both all down and then painting it, you know, the, the same green as this one here. So they match. I'm getting tossed about that. But anyways, I gotta sand this down here to weld that. And you know, the more I start sanding and dinging around with this thing, the more likely it's gonna need a paint job. So, uh, yeah, and this is where the original hole bolts would have gone through this one. So I didn't have to weld it up or put a bolt or acorn nut here or something. This is where the amp meter would have been. And, uh, yeah, the bike just looks so nice, just like this without those big gauges on there. But I'm going to make the, I'm going to make those bars and, put the gauges on or just see how it looks. Maybe it's something that I could interchange on it, take it off, take it on and put a standard set on here. I'm not sure, but right now I'm gonna sand this down and I get that welded on there. Okay, after a couple hours of welding and grinding, welding and grinding. <laughs> it's a little bit porous, but that's okay. A little bit of a filler in there. And, and I did the same on the inside too. Weld it, grind it down, fill in my holes, weld it down, fill in my holes. Got it uh, drilled straight across. But what I'd like to do though is get a, a spacer or a tube through the frame, weld it into the frame. So you just slide the bolt through the tube. It'll make it a lot stronger fit so now I gotta find a, a tube that'll hold a 3 8 bolt that's what I want to do or 5 16 these are 5 16 that's plenty strong enough and I don't really want to drill out one three or four inches long I could I guess I could make my own but I'm gonna see if Peter's got any kind of piping around I, I always kind of keep that stuff in here but because they're so handy. I, I don't need any, I need a spacer like that, about three inches. Grease gun. Would almost work. So, that's what I got done today. I'm not kidding you, it took me a couple hours. <laughs> really had a hard time getting this lined up because uh, I had to get it 
perfectly true and straight this way. I actually do it, put a piece of tape on there and a tape line so that this rib went right up the center of this acorn because just a little, just a little tilt like that throws it out. So now I got it set perfectly in there. And uh, I'd really like to put a spacer bushing right through the center of it. I've got a, where did it go? This is, if this was just a half inch longer, it'd be perfect. And then I could get it, it's chrome. I got a chrome acorn nut. And that's perfectly aligned. I had to draw alignment marks all around it to make sure I got that in the right spot. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna sand that tank right down. I'm gonna sand it down to the bare steel. Maybe I should leave the whole thing bare steel, the tank, this, everything. <laughs> Kinda has a cool look. Lots of ideas, lots of ideas. I gotta take it off the stand and, well, I, I gotta find my degree ruler so I can set the degrees on this and I know it's more than 90, it's like 100. And just to see if it's gonna hit the tank. I do have a taller risers now. I got taller ones I could put in, if that's what we're gonna do. So that's where I'm at so far. Got a piece of a uh, pipe from Peter, so I drilled a hole, got it lined up. That was a little bit of a trick. Got it through here. Welded it in. You gotta file this down a little bit more. Because this pipe is so, th it's so thin, the tubing on this bike, like <laughs> to me, I mean, man, if you're in a, if you're in a crash one of these bikes, this frame would just buckle right in. It's such thin tubing they use everywhere. So uh, by putting the spacer in here, and I, I bolt this up tight, I'm not gonna crush the, the, uh, the frame or squeeze the tangs in on the, on the tank. So I got that made there, and I'm going to uh, uh, weld in. It's too thin to put. I could put one or two threads in there, and that's about it. Not strong enough. It'll just come undone. So I'm going to weld the nut into this one to hold the tank. I'll just put this on there. Oh, I made this bolt too. I want it fatter in the center because this is like a three-eighths hole. And uh, it's like a 5 16 bolt. I th yeah, I threaded it 5 16 So I wanted it fatter in the center. So I made it fatter. Turned it down and threaded it. So it sits in a little tighter. Doesn't doesn't rock as much. Okay, I'm gonna. I gotta weld in that hole and this hole and this hole. And. Uh, and I'm going to weld in that bolt in there too. Get that all ready so that part of the bike will be done. This takes a lot of time <laughs> just to do this little shit. So I've locked tightened this this bolt. I've tightened I've tightened this end up on here and I've locked tightened it so it's on there solid so I can always just undo the one side, through like that. I even had to machine the acorns down, both of them, bevel it and round it because it's so close to that that curve in the tank with the flange. Probably should have left a bigger tang on it, but this goes in here. Nice and solid. 
I was trying to figure out this brake arm there yesterday too, like how all this works, but uh, I gotta have all the spacing in here. It, it, the tolerances are so close that this arm actually is hitting the, the uh, gearbox. So uh, I think I gotta have the spacer here. It's, it's gotta be set up just right. And um, where's the other piece I'm gonna work on? So this is the frame piece that I cut out. It was up here under the tank, but hits the tank. So I want to move it back here. So I'm going to uh, clean this up a fair bit, reuse it. And I'm going to mount it right about, right about there. And I think I'll cut this, bend it. I tried to heat it up and bend it. I, I don't have torches. If I had torches, that's the next thing I got to get. I guess there's some torches. Peter's got it, but then I'd have to load the bike up on the trailer. I could do that. I'm just working on my trailer outside there right now. I'm, uh, I just need the wood now. Yeah, so this will be, uh, I'm going to weld that back in there so it looks like it's still factory. And I'll, I'll line this up. And then the other thing I've got, I think I'll do today, is the, uh, yeah, see there's a piece of that pipe that I got from Peter, I turned it down to make the spacer up there. <clears throat> so I got the, uh, the new Timken bearing for the wheel, so I'm going to get that in there and uh, uh, get the spacing right for the inner tube, get the right clearance. I, I got to look it up again. I think it's three to three thou or six thou or something. It's not too much. Um, and then the spacers that I made for this rear wheel, I think I'm out by uh, two mil, I think. I think if I take one mil off of, add one mil to this side, and, Take one off of that side. The wheel will be a little bit more, a little bit more uh, centered. Because now that I got them in there, and now that it's fairly tight and rigid, I can measure from the swing arm to this plate on either side, and I'm out a little bit. So I'm gonna fix that. And uh, yeah, it'd be nice to get that done. Get this bolt done, and then get work on this frame here. And, uh, um, yeah, I've been looking at different seats, solo seats to go in there, either that or make one, but there is a couple nice ones out there. Okay, that's it for now. Let me work on this uh, rear wheel. Okay, I'm going to try to pull that bearing out. Bearing race out. So the blind hole uh, bearing puller. It's surprising at how uh, how much this is ex this expands getting in there. This one. So I need a couple wrenches here.
got the, the race back in there. <laughs> I tried to, I had to use the next size up um, a bearing puller and I tried to slide hammer it through there and then I ended up just sticking it upside down. So it's just perfectly on the outside and giving a couple taps with a hammer up here and that worked. I got it in there. Okay, now I can put this wheel back together. Okay, I got the, uh, the wheel back on, the new wheel bearing in, and uh, uh, I don't know, it's probably still going to be lots of clearance there, but Sure, you can hear that. Now, when I measured it with with the old wheel bearing in there, there was 30 thou, I think, clearance, and it's supposed to be between four and 18. So it would be nice to get it under 10. I'm supposed to mount this to the frame here somewhere, but I'm going to try to. I may have to. May have to put this on here. pretty hard to do. there but this is pretty solid here now and I'm bracing it 25 thou so if I took off 15 thou that would get it down to 10 that'd be in the middle so I'm gonna start with there 25 thou take I'll take 15 thou off Just see where I'm starting though. Zero this. Now that was in thou, so yeah, I better do this in thou. I'm sure, let me just double check that. <laughs> okay, so that was in thou, so let me set this one to thou. Inch, zero. So this is two point five five ten measured here. Two point or five point five four eight. Uh, we're getting quite a variance here. I might have to square this thing up. If I just do the ends, maybe this way here. 0 0.5503. Five, 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 I might have to square this thing up. Hmm. 0.5480. Probably gotten dinged up over the years going in and out, so I'm going to uh, straighten that out. I may have to do this twice. out. Ok, 
Okay, let's clean that out. Yeah, I could deburr it a little bit more. Oh, that's good. I gotta take it off one more time anyway, so we'll just try this. Okay. Chinese puzzle. So. That goes inside there. That goes in there. Washer, nut, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten pieces, eleven including the axle. <laughs> and I actually need one more spacer in here too. I could put that little spacer in there, but yeah, twelve including the axle. Okay. Let me do those uh, chopper build off shows in uh, what do they do? 72 hours, 40 hours, one week. Yeah. It's a lot of pre manufactured parts there. Orange County chopper is the worst. Those first couple episodes there were uh, the old man Tuttle. And his son there, the one with the glasses, the heavy set guy, going to like a, sh it looks like a supermarket, great big warehouse, and they got a cart that they're filling up with parts off the shelf. Too much off? No way. I can feel play, but I sure took a lot off. Man, I hardly took anything off. different size spacers but in my case I can make one now I can feel play there uh, I wish the swing arm was bolted on there tight much off there's play there but uh, I would have I would have liked to have more play mm. 
No. Wow. Uh, do that again. <laughs> I should have just cleaned up the edges and then retested it again. That's what I should have done. So now I'm at 2.525. So I was out 25 thou, and I took 25 thou off. Yep. I should have just taken 20 thou off at the most. So I took a little bit too much off. Could, maybe I could add on to this, I don't know, spacer. Hmm. Let me think on that either. I, I got that one inch pipe, I could have. I just cut a new piece out of this stuff. The mail just came and my parting blade uh, came in for, so I can cut the aluminum for those uh, wheel spacers. So that came in and then this just came in. Uh, I didn't know it was brand new, but it's all sealed in the oil and wax here, plastic. And it's got the cutting blade in it too, because I need that for uh, boring out that spacer a little bit on the inside. So. I hope that's going to fit into my chuck there, right into there. Supposed to. Check that out later. Okay, I'm just going to cut off and make a new uh, wheel spacer because I screwed that one up. <laughs> I can't believe I took 25 thou off just like I barely touched it. So I'll cut this with a two and three quarters and then I'll mill it down. Okay, I made a new one. <laughs> So the one that I turned down too far was 2.523. And the new one is 2.539 or four. So uh, two, three. So say it was um, 0.23, and I got 40. So what's that, 17 thou. It's actually 38, 4, 30. I'm gonna take off a couple more thou off this, so maybe I can do it in one shot. Just a couple more thou. Okay, that was two, three. And now I got this one down to might take more off. Thirty-four. Two, three, thirty-three would be ten. Yeah, it's it's right around thirty-three, ten thou. Well, let's see what that does. We'll try it in there. Ah, the pain of putting this thing back in there. There's a certain torque for that. It's, I think it's 40 foot pounds. Good play there. I don't know if it 
it's measurable. <laughs> There we go. If you can see that in there. Okay, I'll hold it still here. There's zero. Oh, we gotta get this in the fucking hole there. There's it, we got uh, uh, seven tile. Let me see zero right here. There we go, we got seven thou on there. Each line is ten thou, and there's a little mark halfway. Perfect, seven thou. Oh my god, I've done that part of this thing. Okay. So now, there's another. I'm gonna measure from the, the, uh, the swing arm to the hub on both sides and I think I'm out two mil. I think I gotta bring the hub over two mil this way and then I'll know how thick to make my spacer. Oh my God, I'm glad I got that done. Turn this to metric, zero it. And I'm gonna measure it from the the outside of this just because it gives me a good place to uh, fifty six point five. Fifty-eight point seven. Say two mil. So I'll take one mil off this side over here. I'll take one mil off this one here. And so it's supposed to be a spacer in there too. What is a spacer? Yeah, one and a half mil. Okay. Okay, let me measure this now. Oh, put this in decimals. In millimeters. Seven point oh Fifty-six point four three. I think that's what I had before. Fifty-six point four three. So we're getting close here. Sixty. I gotta write these numbers down. Okay. Made a new spacer or two. <laughs> 
and I just got this nut finger tight and uh, I just want to see how much play I got in there like this so I measured it that's without tightening up anything that's that's 50 thou because you know I could have 200 thou in there and I can tighten up that nut and it's just gonna pinch the swing arm tight right so 50 thou isn't very much I'm gonna leave it like that maybe it could maybe it should be zero I don't know or close to it but 50 thou is not gonna hurt we're just pulling in the swing arm 50 thou that's tight we got our 7 thou clearance this way now I'm gonna measure from here to here to see if we're center we should be pretty close I don't, we're not perfect, I don't think, but I think we're going to be very close. Almost 58, just, just under 58 millimeters. And this is 59. So we're one millimeter out. 58 here, 59 there. Fifty-eight, fifty-nine, and I've got fifty thou I can play with. So I could add fifty thou more to that spacer over there. I gotta <laughs> uh, convert convert that to to uh, fifty thou to metric. Okay. So I just asked, I just asked Siri, <laughs> and a pro, 39 thou was one millimeter, so say 40 thou. I've got 50 thou clearance here when this is loose. So I could add uh, uh, 40 thou to that spacer, make another one, third one. And that would give me the one millimeter I need. Fifty-seven and change, almost fifty-eight. Fifty-eight point six four now. Fifty-eight point ten. Oh no, I'm only getting half of that. Fifty-seven point eight. Seven point seven now it varies all the time. Fifty eight, less than a mil. I'm gonna leave that for now. That's close enough. Oh. I could add twenty thirty thou over here, and that would be uh, I'm just trying to get it dead center in the frame. But that's that's close enough right now. So now I can figure out from here to the center of the sprocket on my other Norton, and then I know where I were to cut off that spacer, and even that spacer I could shim if I had to. Okay. Trying to cut this spacer off. This is the spacer that I need here for the rear wheel for the sprocket. I don't think there's going to be enough left over for the uh, rotor. And it's taking me forever. I got a new parting bit there today. And, and uh, 
I have to keep sharpening it all the time. I don't know if it's just cheap or I'm not doing it right or the lathe is just too small because that's a lot of cutting. That's taking me two hours to do that right there, which is ridiculous. So, yeah, I'm almost through. So, yeah, I think I'm going to finish up this video today. Turn this off, turn this off. And uh, I was really hoping to get that spacer made, but I'll get that. I'll get that space to make for the sprocket tomorrow. And uh, then I'll measure up and see what I need for, for that. Maybe there will be enough left over for that router. I don't know. I think I'm going to be short a little bit. Anyways, I'm starving. I've been out here all day. That's going to be it for this video today. Thanks for watching, everybody. And uh, it's going to be a nice bike when I get her done.